know, you look at Jesus and all I have, and you just, you know, you're drawn. I'm drawn towards him, to to his, to his character, to what he did, to the person that he is, to his compassion, to his, to his forgiveness, to his, to the way he, he loves people, and you know, this this amazing thing he did. Um, you know, he came to um, to die for us on a cross. My name is Richard, I'm a member of uh, Holy Trinity uh, Church and this is part of my story. Cut long story short, I was brought up in a non-Christian background, a non-Christian family, um, and I would, I would probably describe my upbringing as dysfunctional and, and broken but uh, we'll, leave, we'll, leave, we'll leave that there for the time being. Um, at 16 years of age I moved to Burbage and I happened upon Mount Road uh, Baptist Church uh, on the, for, we used to go to the youth club on a Friday night and um, with some pals and we used to have a bit of a giggle and my behaviour wasn't so great really. I was drawn towards these strange, kind, nice Christian people that were all you know, ready to, to forgive and to, and, and to love and to be generous in their, in their time with me, even though I was acting like a bit of an idiot, really, most of, most of the time as, as a child. So. And at 18, I um, made a commitment to follow Christ, and it was on a Sunday evening at Mount Road Baptist Church. And um, yeah, I mean, again, long story short, I drifted away really fairly quickly in terms of my following Christ. I started work, I moved to Coventry, and I discovered uh, all sorts of stuff, you know, women, work, money, um, secular life. And um, yeah, I, I drifted away uh, fairly, fairly quickly, I think, from, from the path that really, in hindsight, I should have. I should have followed, but you know, I was 18, and, it, and uh, that, that was that was that was life, really. Well, I spent the next 35 years, um, for want of a better way of putting it, living in the wilderness, really, um, living very much a hedonistic and prodigal life, really. That was uh, that was my um, experience of Christianity uh, growing up. About eight years ago, my personal life and business life, I guess, all came sort of crashing down around me. Um, I've been married and divorced twice, and um, I've had a string of, of sort of failed and broken relationships. And that led me back to Hinkley. And well, I would say God led me back to Hinkley, looking back at it now, really. But I came back to Hinkley and I, t I was registering for, uh, to, to, to join a doctor's surgery. I met Helen House in the, the surgery um, and I've not seen Helen for many, many, many years. And she told me that everybody was now sort of meeting at Holy Trinity. So um, she said, you know, come down and join us and, and check it all out, which, um, which is what I, um, yeah, which is what I started to do really. Um, occasionally on a Sunday I'd drift in um, to church and sit at the back in the corner so no one would spot me and I could leg it before the before the last hymn finished and um, yeah that sort of went on and that, that went on for a few years sort of drifting in and out and at the same time as while this was happening I used to listen to premier Christian radio and I still do quite a bit and in particular there was, a, there was a, an American evangelist in fact he's, he's, he's Egyptian actually but he now lives in the States and his name is Michael Youssef, and he used to he preaches on um, Premier Christian Radio at nine o'clock every day, every morning. And I used to listen to his sermons, and I used to drive to work sometimes in tears, just listening to, to what he was saying about Christ and about heaven and about God. And and it really, it really was resonating with me. And then, by the same token, I'd sort of come to the end of that sermon, and it would finish, and I'd think, well, yeah, that's all well and good, but you know, if I was to become a Christian I'd have to give up all of the things that I do and I was really 
on the fence about the whole thing still, even though I sort of believe I wasn't prepared to give everything up. A little bit like the, you know, the parable of the rich young man when, when Jesus had that conversation with him and he told him he's going to give everything, you know, sell all his, all his possessions and give everything to the poor. And, and that was something, I guess, at that point, I wasn't prepared to do. Why do I believe it's true? Um, God has, has kept on pursuing me, I guess is the best way of describing it. For 35 years, he's been niggling away, pricking my conscience, coming into my thoughts and my heart, even while I was living this sort of, um, you know, lifestyle that um, I used to live. But he was, he was there, he was always in the background. The word to, to repent, I guess, is to, you know, to, to want to go towards God. And this is something, that, um, as opposed to going away from him, if you like. And this is something I just find myself wanting to do. Um, you know, he came to, um, to die for us on a cross. And, you know, how many of us would die for um, people that we love? We might do, you know, but, to, you know, he died for people while, while, while we were still sinners. He died for people that, that, that hated him. And it's just, it's just it's such an incredible um, act of, of love. And it, it just, it's just, you know, it, it's incumbent on us, um, upon us really just you know, to, to investigate that, to look at it uh, you know, deeply and carefully. Jesus, back in John 6, 68, he said to the, the disciples as they were beginning to leave him, uh, and all the other you know, sort of people were leaving him. He said to the, to the 12, are you going to leave me too? And Simon Peter turned back to um, Jesus and said, um, to whom shall we go to? You know, you are the son of God. You have the words of eternal life. And for me, that really is the, probably the most, one of the most powerful bits in the Bible. You know, where, where else can we go other than to Jesus? Being a Christian is, is amazing. Um, it's amazing in terms of the hope that we have in this broken, fallen world that we live in. You know, the hope for eternal life, to be with Jesus and to be with God for eternity. That's, that's the amazing thing about being a Christian. Um, it's also incredibly, I found it incredibly difficult. You know, C.S. Lewis, um, puts it really well, um, I'm sure it was C.S. Lewis that said this, that you know, he, he uses sin and the analogy of sin with a very strong sort of hurricane type wind. And uh, he says, you know, you never realize just how strong the wind is if you're walking with it. Um, it's just when you turn around and try and walk back into the wind that you realize just how strong that wind is. And it's exactly the same with sin. You know, when you turn into the wind, when you turn into sin and you try not to sin, you realise just how powerful a force that sin is inside of you. So, you know, make no mistake, it, it is absolutely a, a battle being Christian, but um, it's a battle that is every bit worth fighting for. So what I would say to someone who was new and searching, as, as I was, I guess, uh, I would ask you to look at the brokenness of this world and ask yourself, you know, where, where is your hope really, truthfully? You know, is it in people, friendships, your wife, your husband, your mother, you know, your family? Is it in uh, money? Um, your pensions, your stocks, your shares, is it in your health, is it in your family, is it in relationships? You know, all of these things that are that we have can be taken away from, them, from us just like that. And if there is a God, um, and all of this is true, then, you know, you must explore and investigate um, what this is all about. You can't, you can't pretend it's not there, you can't ignore it. You've got to get out there and, make, and, ask, and ask the questions yourself. That's what we're designed to do. But, you know, we're all sinners. We all live in a broken world and we need a saviour, which is Jesus.